Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warmer 2 Quake Match Gameplay. This time around we are on the Tomb of the Shifting Sands, playing as the High Elves against the Force of Bretonia. And for this game, I wanted to try out a build that's a little different from what I usually run. Normally, this is obviously a very difficult matchup for, for the High Elves, probably one of, if not their worst in the game, uh, due to Bretonian heavy calf being so potent, so good at shutting down backlines, and honestly not bad at dealing with dragon princes. Dragon princes just aren't really that good at dealing with ground knights in particular. But um, I have also kind of struggled against the mobs of trash that Bretonian can throw at them. So I decided normally I run with Teclis and a bunch of dragon princes and kind of try to win the calf fight. But I decided to try something a little different. I decided to bring a Lariel, and that is because a Lariel does have one little nice gimmick against the forces of Bretonia, and that is her AOE. Boon of Isha, and this grants magic damage and immunity to psychology in AoE, which is really nice. Uh, obviously, most Bretonian heavy cab, most of their elite heavy cab at any rate, does have physical resistance. So, the fact that you can negate that is really, really nice. She also does, of course, have some crazy heals. In this situation, we did bring, of course, the Star of Avalorn for that healing. We've got Earthblood, we've got Foss Protection, uh, Arcane and Forging, potentially good against single lords, um, like Lewin or the Green Knight. It can be very decent against those sorts of targets. Tempest, if you're my opponent, went fl with Flyer Spam. Arcane Conduit, of course. Shield of Safari, Life Bloom, and then Shieldstone of Isha. Because although physical resistance might not seem too great against Bretonia, who has a lot of magic damage, it still helps against characters like Lewin. It still helps against uh, characters like Paladins or Knights of the Realm or Men at Arms or any sort of that, any of that sort of stuff. Royal Hippogriff Knights, which you sometimes see that sort of stuff. Alongside her, we do have double nobles. These guys are just there, of course, to dish out some major armor-piercing hurt against enemy large. Behind them, the Fireborn, and then a single unit of Dragon Princes. Our front line composed of four units of spearmen, so nothing particularly impressive. They are backed by two archers with light armor, as well as a single unit of vanilla archers. Up in the sky, we also do have a Frost Dart Phoenix, so looking to do a bit of a Death Star, potentially, with this pocket of elite troops. Backed up by the Frost Dart Phoenix, who, of course, does have an AoE melee attack, and I do believe armor-piercing debuff. Um, Nothing too major, to be honest, against Bretonia, which doesn't allow that much AP, but still. Minus 9 melee attack is no laughing matter, and uh, the Frost Star Phoenix has respectable combat values as well. For my opponent, though, he did decide to go with a very wide composition. He's got a horde of peasants, he's got men-at-arms, unshielded variants, spearmen-at-arms all over the place. So super wide, definitely has me outnumbered by a lot. Uh, he also does have uh, quite a few peasant bows in here as well. He's got uh, two, I think, maybe. I think he had three units in the total. There we go. Three units of them in total. Uh, and then a lot of cavalry. And now this is not something you see all that often from Bretonians. You usually see Grail Knight spam, and maybe some Grail Guardians. But my opponent decided to go with a bit of an elite force here. He's got the Fae Enchanters with regrowth, Earth Blood, uh, Favor of the Fae, and uh, Arcane Conduit, and of course the Mist of the Lady. And alongside her, there's the Green Knight, who is actually stripped down here. He doesn't he doesn't bring very much, uh, but of course he does have some bonkers physical resist, 93% right now, because he is near the Paladin, uh, who of course grants that 18% protection. But uh, some pretty nuts stuff, and uh, the Fae Enchanter is actually very resistant. To the magic damage that unfortunately my whole army is doing because of the Lariel being nearby. Uh, she herself is almost unkillable to that. Then there's a paladin here who is on a horse. He is trying to come in at close as well. He does have some anti-large, of course, but not much AP. Horde of Knights of the Realm in the back, though. And these guys, of course, are going to compromise my backline very easily. Certainly they're not going to do well against Dragon Princes, especially not the Fireborn. They're not even going to do that well against the Frost or Phoenix or the Nobles, but they are potentially a monster against my infantry, uh, which just doesn't have the numbers to hold them off. Uh, my opponent outnumbers me by something like 2 to 1, and uh, almost literally 2 to 1. That said, my archers are going to be able to start unloading on the peasant bows here, potentially forcing them off or making them reconsider their, their life decisions here. Uh, and in the meantime, the Green Knight, he's going to attempt to make a push here, but we are going to counteract him with the Frost or Phoenix, who of course does some pretty significant hurt. He's got magic damage, so the Green Knight's big gimmick, of course, is his uh, his physical resist, but the Frost or Phoenix does bypass that at least, which is nice. But then my opponent does push in from both sides, and he's got any pincers, so the Frost or Phoenix is going to start getting pounded. My opponent does buff the Green Knight a whole bunch, and uh, so things are looking rather grim. But not all is bad. Uh, as you can see, we are going to be able to push forward with our spearmen. We're going to be able to try to intercept this scav, try to tie down these pockets of troops. Over here, the Dragon Prince is trying to pulverize these peasant mobs to open up some maneuver room. And over here, we are committing our nobles, we are committing our Ilariel and our Phoenix into the fight, just trying to shut down this pocket. My opponent countering with regrowth and earth blood, but 
The fact of the matter is, this is a very expensive Winds of Magic engagement for my opponent. We do follow up with a Fast Protection, and in this grind situation, Alariel's going to be doing quite a bit of work. Uh, the Nobles are going to be doing immense work. They're going to be getting kills, and of course, the Green Knight is not going to be able to sustain himself through this forever. Uh, unfortunately, my archers here are kind of forced off. They are trying to unload a bit into these uh, knights and uh, then into the archers, but really, they're not able to quite do that much. Uh, but my opponent's Cav, it, he, he is trying to cycle charge here, trying to get a lot of maneuvering done, trying to get on these dragon princes and surround them as they're isolated here. But we are able to counteract with some more healing. While here in this pocket, things are starting to look a little grim. We are able to pressure the Green Knight. We are able to uh, beat down the Paladin. And a lot of these knights of the realm, they are taking some major losses. My opponent is trying to top them off. But uh, they are slowly but surely being forced back. In this long fight, we do have these debuffs on our side. We do have a lot of healing. Uh, Alario, of course, is providing that damage buff, and we do get another and we do get another um, Earth Blood going. So we're getting a lot of healing here, and that's really pretty significant. And unfortunately, my opponent, the Paladin here, just gets this, this not beaten out of him. The Nobles are just a much better anti-large tool. The Paladin, he's got his small little anti-large. I think it's of 18. If you look at the stats real quick. Uh, 12 actually only, so he's really not that great of an anti-large lord, so he's our hero, so he's going to be forced out and made to reconsider his life decisions, and in the meantime, we are able to free up our Fireborn a little bit, get a charge into the side of these troops, into the side of these Knights of the Realm, and these men at arms, and force them to flee, which is really useful, we're able to really break these pockets, and in the meantime, the spears here, they are buying me time, certainly they're being pounded, unfortunately, by my opponent's archers, but they are tying down these men at arms, buying me time, to sort of clear up, and if we can remove the men-at-arms from the field, if we can get rid of these annoying pockets of troops, then my opponent will be in a much worse position. Unfortunately here, my archers are being forced to flee from these very angry men-at-arms. Uh, we are going to try to pull these spears into the fight, but really full flight here for me. But in the pocket, the Green Knight is almost gone. My opponent cast Regrowth on him, very badly wasted. He should have put it on the Paladin. Perhaps he did intend to, it just missed. But the Green Knight here getting pulverized, and uh, he's not going to last very much longer. He is going to get start getting taken down here. Only 300 HP left. And uh, as he's trying to pull away, I was trying to click him very <laughs> very aggressively, trying to get him knocked out. Uh, the Paladin, though, also getting pulverized, and this hero squad is suddenly failing very badly. And it's important to keep in mind that the superiority the Fireborn has, stat-wise, compared to something like Knights of the Realm, is immense. Uh, 43-41 compared to 26-32, and they've got a huge bonus for large, 110 armor, they've got that physical resist, which Knights of the Realm do not bypass, and uh, that's a huge boon there, and you can see the Paladin here, removed from play, the Green Knight effectively dead, uh, he's got almost no HP left. Unfortunately, one issue here is that Alariel is hitting her healing cap, because my opponent focused her pretty heavily, definitely a smart move, but we are going to be able to shortly remove the Green Knight from play, he's down to 199 HP, uh, I'm not entirely sure when, he does eventually die here, at some point. See, there he gets staggered, but he's not going down just yet. Uh, but as long as we do have Alariel in there, uh, we are going to be able to bring him down. You can see he falls from his horse, so Gilles de Breton is done. Frostar Phoenix now bogging down the Fan Enchantress, and I actually pull Alariel away. And you might be wondering why I pull her away. Well, because I don't want her providing that AoE Magic Hara, uh, which is going to make life very difficult trying to get rid of the Fan Enchantress. Now, my opponent at this point is starting to use archers, trying to pick apart my hero mob here, trying to pick apart my nobles. But at this stage of the game, we've essentially finally gotten to a point where we are in control. Now certainly it does not look good if we look at the numbers, by the numbers here. I've lost about half my army, my opponent's lost about a third of his army, so the losses have been worse for me. But most of my opponent's troops, of course, trashed your infantry on the peripheries here. Obviously Spearmen and Arms, they are anti-large, but they're not going to hold up against 25 Fireborn rear charging them. Uh, and at this stage, essentially very little is left for my opponent. His cavalry is mostly gone. Knights of the Realm on 8 miles, 5, the Paladin in full flight, uh, this, these Knights of the Realm on 7, This only these Knights of the Realm are still around King of these guys on 8, these guys down to 10, so none of these Knights of the Realm have good model count anymore, so they're not going to be able to contribute the massive damage they really need to be doing uh, to counter the Nobles. We're going to be able to plunge our Spears into the fight here, plug this gap, and start shutting down the Fan Chantress for good, and she's not really able to flee, the Nobles of course with that anti-large bonus are going to do some immense work against her, and in the meantime you can see the Fireborn, the the Phoenix fl flying around, Alariel here going to try to push in against these peasant bows, you can see these Knights of the Realm getting annihilated on the charge, and now we do get another uh, a AoE heal, we do get the Star of Avalon here, going down on these Spearmen, keeping them in the fight, healing up our Nobles who are in some pretty bad shape, and the Fan Chantress here trying to flee, but getting the stuffing kicked out of her, and she's finally going to break here, she's actually going to die I think, and at this point it's going to snowball into shatter for the Bretonians. So, a match that started a bit pretty grim. My opponent got some major wampin' done on my Phoenix. He did manage to trade pretty effectively initially. But in the long haul, with the nobles in the fight, with the Phoenix in the fight, providing those debuffs, with the, the magic aura completely counteracting the Green Knight, we ended up snaring the win.
that said, um, I'm not sure I like this comp better than the Teclas comp. I, I like Teclas because he gives you Enfeebling Foe, he gives you Flaming Sword of Ruin, which, you can syner which synergizes really nicely with the Kindle Flame. So you can get a very big burst of damage in on Knights initially. Um, he doesn't provide a constant AoE m magic aura, which, which screws you against characters such as Fae Enchantress. And Teclas does have, he's got Regrowth, which is better at the, for single targets. It kind of synergizes more nicely with uh, Fireborn, especially. Um, and he does have an a uh, he does have the ability to just shut down your opponent's um, magic for a little bit with the Scroll of Hoeth. So I'm not sure who I prefer for this match. I, I think that if you're, I do think that if you're trying to be legitimately competitive in Bretonia against uh, High Elves or in High Elves against Bretonia, Bretonia, uh, Fan Chantress is the way to go. But if you're playing as the High Elves, I think your best options are probably Alariel or Teclas. I personally like Teclas. Basically, because he's a little more flexible, I think he can net and he can net knights to keep them out of range. You can use flock of doom, depending on how what sort of mix of spells you bring for us. But you can bring flaming sword of ruin to counteract physical resist. You have regrowth for the heals. You've got um, enfeebling foe to weaken specific targets. Uh, you can use uh, flock of doom actually to melt enemy mobs. And if your opponent goes super infantry heavy, and uh, it's all fairly effective and cost efficient spells, which is really nice from Teclas. Whereas Alariel is basically all about the heals and support. Um, and sh she does have that downside of that uh, AoE uh, magic resist, which while it's good in certain situations, it's also just bad against things like the Fae Enchantress. Um, nobles, I think, great in this matchup. Spears and Archers, honestly, I think are the way to go. Though you can go with Bolt Throwers, Phoenix Guard, that sort of stuff. There are a bunch of alternate builds, I think, that you can core yourself, that of any troops you can bring. I do personally really like this Spear and Archer with Dragon Prince combo. The uh, Feet of Rustar Phoenix was okay. I, I'm not sold on it. I think that for the cost, it just didn't deliver. Uh, it was a 1600 point unit that just didn't do enough. Uh, for my opponent's build, I don't necessarily think unshielded men at arms is the way to go. I think you want shields. The Silver Shields are just really good against archery. Uh, I'm also not a big fan of Knights of the Realm in this matchup. Green Knight, it's a bit of a gimmick that can work uh, against High Elves. The Paladin, whatever. I, I, the core here of Heroes is not necessarily bad, but I think what you really want with Bretonia is to ditch these Knights of the Realm and bring Real Knights. Uh, you, the, the magic damage bypassing physical resist is huge against both Phoenix Guard and the uh, and Dragon Princes. Perfect Vigor is great in a protracted game. Uh, it, I don't think it really showed that much in this game, but in a lot of matches uh, that you'll get with High Elves, they might get protracted, especially if your opponent was with a camping box. And in that situation, you really just want Grail Knights uh, to break them over time. And, uh, that's my two cents on the matter. Uh, regardless, uh, well played to my opponent here. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you find it entertaining. If we look at the losses here, it's actually funny to see that all these key units were taken out, but then my opponent's infantry corps stuck, was stuck around to the end and then shattered. So uh, it is worth keeping in mind just uh, that... That infantry core is pretty flimsy. If, if you can win the calf fight against Bretonia, you can win the game. So don't be afraid of over-investing with the High Elves into cavalry and anti-cav measures. Uh, because if you can win that calf fight, you can usually pull through and win the whole game. So, uh, yeah, I, I suppose that's it. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it entertaining and fun to watch, if you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, as usual, don't hesitate to post them. And I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.